and welcome to what is round 3, uh, Hungaroring and the Motor Racing Super Season League. It's 12 rounds of uh, intense racing with some of the fastest sim racers on the PlayStation platform. Now you join us here just after the first couple of corners of the first lap. We've got damage, smashed out at turn 1, uh, not the greatest of starts in all honesty. Uh, now we're just trying to recover, so a lot of close, uh, close incomings. Even closer Lamborghinis. <coughs> so yeah, we got twatted at the start of the race and now we're in uh, we're in P17. This is in the back and it's a big recovery drive. Difficult conditions here at the Hungara Ring. It's uh, wet to flooded. Uh, I haven't done much practice to this. I think I did about two sessions. So practice is really showing off. But I was so angry that I got spun at turn one. This is a tier one lobby. So being spun at tier one with 12 seconds. Of damage in an hour race was doing my head in. So yeah, it's not just me that's finding uh, <coughs> the conditions tricky. And just to reiterate, that wasn't me that span out at turn one. I was actually span around and then co collected by a merc that didn't want to go around me instead of through me. So let's get to some action. I figured out how to do the fast forward button instead of it being just a cut. So we'll see how it goes. And again, sorry for the audio. We are trying to sort it out. Coming up onto turn five, that's it, another accident. There's the Merc, uh, Vlad there, just having a moment. I think it was the Merc that decided to take my front bumper. Boys battling ahead, so yeah, obviously I've done a little bit of editing work to this uh, last night. It was a great race. Uh, I'm going to give you the whole entire season the good, the bad, the ugly. Like I win the race, so I don't win the race, you know. It, it, not all races. you got to be able to win, so. Hopefully, not too hard on yourself. I think, yeah, the McLaren gets on the Astro Turf there. Green Astro Turf at death. P14, so we're making up spaces. Uh, we're putting in work right now. I think this was a hell of a lap as well, this one was. Uh, so, yeah, we're only on our second lap now. I'm trying to let the tyres come in. Uh, I should be around TC6 or 7. Just until the first couple of laps. Nope, oh, that's the Ferrari. Just the first couple of laps, let the tyres bed in a little bit, not, not to be too aggressive on them, scrubbing them, because once you've done that the first couple of laps, they're not the same, so... Coming up on the 9.11 here, shrimp, but... Wow, yeah, a little bit of a space there. Hey, if you, don't, if you don't go for the gap, you're no longer a racing driver. P12! Coming up on the back of Lucky Star now. Looks like you got a bit of a bad drive out of the last corner there. A little quicker than these guys throughout the lap, but I'm sure that's because they were battling. A little later on the brakes in, it looks like he gives me the corner, like he, he opens that way up. It was a bit of a bomb from where it was, but it, it did look like Lucky was actually giving me the position, so... Probably quicker to follow. Bit of fast forwarding. Yeah, so let us know in the comments section what you think of this, guys. Uh, instead of obviously me cutting the race and it cutting back in when there were some action, I decided that we'd uh, try and figure out what the fast forward button was to get on top of the action so you're not just watching an entire race and absolutely nothing going on because th this race is action packed full of drama full of bits and i'm hoping i can uh, enlighten you along the way with a bit of conversation so here we go lap four this is my teammate ahead here chris Pusick, run djc team <laughs> Having a little bit of an excursion there i believe he comes on the mic and so apologises for the rejoin that he did, yeah. So, yeah, again, me and Chris, teammates for the season. He's in the 911, we're in the McLaren. I have over 12 seconds worth of damage here. Chris was faster than me through qualifying and probably the worst pace too, so I'm, I'm just indicating there to try and let him go anywhere that's safe. Hindsight's a beautiful thing. I should have let him pass after this chicane bit here on the left-hand side, but that was a bit too dodgy we're gonna lose too much time with all the puddles so I decided to let him around is it around here or something like that yeah it's just gonna be quicker for me to try and keep with Chris try and use his draft see what his lines are see if he can pick anything up but more importantly with my damage the way it is I don't want to set him off the tap dog is free see if we stay in uh, Chris's draft so I don't think we did manage though but you know the, the plan was to try and keep with Chris let him catch up on the back of like Sintron and Mass and all and what and try be opportunistic because We've got a pit window here of 35 minutes to 25 minutes, so I have no choice but to ride this damage out. The car felt absolutely crap. And it always does when you've been hitting the front or the rear. It, it wasn't helpful at all, and you know, this is a tier 1 race. The first corner of the race, so... I think lesser drivers would have been in the stewards' decision box for that one, but, you know, I'm not a little girl. 
it happens in racing, you've got to take the rough and smooth and unfortunately this is just the hand we've been dealt today, so back on to the lights here, yeah we've got a Ferrari for it, eight parts in the middle, having a moment, so it was, so again yeah let me know what you think of the fast forward and stuff, otherwise I'm just going to use the, the cut. So yeah, P11 now from P18 I believe it was after the first lap, so good recovery so far. Still kind of with Chris, I think he has a moment here, he does jackknife the 911. He is so lucky to keep hold of that car there, seriously, because it just snap usually on you, so fantastic driving Chris. Yeah, it's a tricky car to drive as it is with the snap oversteer for no reason in the 911, so when stuff like that happens to you, you are extremely luckily lucky to keep it pointing in the right direction. So I believe we do much the same, we keep ahead for a little bit longer this time of course, but we do let him back through again. I think it's on the start finish to hunt down uh, the Audi in front. Yeah, it must be here. So 10 laps in, 20 minutes down, P10, indicator on there, just letting Chris know. I don't think he sees it because of the nature of the corner, so my indicator must have been hidden. Anyway, pull over, try and get on the ass end of Chris and see if we can uh, pick up a few more spots. Realistically, we should be P between P10 and P5 for this race, I think. I think we had that kind of pace for it, but with the damage at the start, it's kind of, it was a bit of a nightmare. And it does happen in racing games, and with the pit window set up the way it is, you, you've just got to ride it out, otherwise you're going to be a full pit stop down. Then you come in to clear your, uh, your mandatory one. <coughs> Chris here looking on the inside. On hard on the brakes here. I think the Audi being very fair. Uh, tries to go up the inside. Do. <coughs> So, again, who has got the inside in the Audi, but I know I've got good grip in this McLaren, so I hang it around the outside. He's very fair in that uh, Audi, he didn't push me off, he did give me the room, so managed to pick up another spot. That was due perhaps Chris's move there, we managed to keep with him a little bit and jump on the back of what Chris was doing, so... Huge respect to him and the Audi driver, you've got to, you've got to play the game. You've got to give each other the room for racing to happen. And as you will see towards the end as well, I mean, I do make a mistake. Which does cost me two positions on the last lap, but... You will see what I mean as soon as it comes up and on. There's another car that, uh, at the time, oh my god. I absolutely, yeah, curved around. It's the kind of said it all there. I wasn't sure what that car was doing, and the replay doesn't do it any justice. Because it looked like it was coming straight on, but it wasn't. So again, we're speeding it up here. About to come up onto the pit window, I think, with 35 minutes to go. Yeah, I do. I don't know why Chris kind of fakes to go in the pit here because obviously my teammate doesn't matter when he comes in and when he doesn't. It looked like he fakes to come in and then comes out. Anyway, the plan was to come in straight away, get the damage off, which you can see in the bottom left there, it's 42 seconds. Kind of play around with the PSI a little bit, front right. Need a little more of them. So yeah, coming up on the pit box now, it needs to be perfect. We're already going to lose the 12 seconds in the pit stop for the 30 second stop. Well, it's not. It's a 25 second stop, mandatory, no matter what you do. And then you can put tyres on and cost yourself another 5 seconds. So 30, 25 to 30 seconds. We're doing 42. We've got no choice. The McLaren feels like absolute dog crap. So unfortunately, we're there to fix it. A little bit of a long way. And we're out. Good thing about it was... Bear with me, I've got the phone going. Sorry about that guys, I really have got a spam chances to get on. So on the back of Lucky again now, I believe we took Lucky at the start, finished before, he was very, very uh, willing. And he's come out of the way again now, I haven't really start on the stream, so big, big thanks to Lucky Star there, you uh, didn't hold yourself up on me basically. And it's what tier one driving is about, like the guy has known who off the start finish. Yeah, this is a bit dodgy. I think we actually 
A bit naughty here, this was a bit of a bomb on him, but he was very aware I was there. He does break super early for the corner as well, though. So there's no excuse for the bomb, but... He was a very compromising car, he, he let me come on this side of him and uh, overtake him. So again, thank you uh, Sim Racing and Lucky Star as well for, for that, because he must have made life so much harder for me. So on the back of Red Bull now, we had a bit of a battle last time, but not much, I was running map 12 in Zanderfort, which uh, doesn't help. Anyway, on the back of uh, Red Bull, he's a good driver, fast in the McLaren. Yeah, we get a bit of a bad corner on that last one. He breaks super early and I have to come out of it. So I'm going to crash into the back of him. So yeah, it's just again trying to get onto the back of Red Bull now. So we can make the pass, which will be for P8. Now, given where we were at the start of the race with the damage, I don't think that's a bad return at all. And it looks like Red Bull's struggling with the grip. I don't think he's taking tyres at the pit stop. Which, with a wet race, as long as you've got the car set up properly, you really don't need to take tyres. However, if you have the car set up aggressively, they just get eaten. Which we see later on in the race, a lot of people start falling, and I think it's due just not to taking tyres and having that grip there. Because we're in the same car, me and Red Bull, like, so... The pace, the, the handling should be rather similar. But for all intents and purposes, it does look like he's struggling with the rears. So then again in Vanderbilt, I don't know if that's a setup issue that he has, but... I don't know, it might just be a strategy issue, he might just not take tyres at his pit stop and drive over five seconds, I don't know. We can only speculate to accumulate, but I do know this, he is a fantastic driver, who's just not had the look of the green yet. There's also a lad in here as well, Kurt, who's in the McLaren. Uh, we'll see the result towards the end, but what a race he had, what a drive as well, I'm super happy for him. Like, obviously I want to I win every single race that I enter, which... It's understandable, I, I want to win everything, but I'm so glad that, that somebody else in the McLaren managed to pull off a result here. And the, the thing is as well, he's a good lad, he's a top lad, he's Kirk, so he's more than deserving. And here's the other thing as well, it wasn't like it was handed to him, he fought his ass off for that. And the setup work had done during the week, he'd spent a lot of time like perfecting the setup and putting in the hours to get a result like this. So hats off to Kirk, he really did perform out through the week and really deserving as a result up front. Finally getting the, the win of the season there, so. Top man Kirk. Hopefully, might be able to actually give you a race come spare if I don't get taken out in a rouge, but we shall see. So again guys, different different strategy, different formula on with this one. I hopefully I've killed the game sound a little bit so the mic's a little more pronounced. And We'll see what we think of this fast forward and stuff, because I've not seen it until now, until it renders, so I could probably do with turning it down to one notch a little bit. It's a little smoother. But yeah, again, get, leave me comments, guys, see what you think, and I'm sorry for missing out the start of the race. It wasn't until I got around, like, the third corner that I realised I weren't actually recording the race. Plus, I'd made about a million mistakes, we started in PC 2 or 3, which in this weather, you really don't want to do. <coughs> I'm going to try and save the tyres on the first lap, so... 50 minutes to go, we're hunting down Kem Kerbo there. Now, believe me, that lap delta, I've been hunting him down since 20 odd minutes ago. And that lap delta was at least 16, 17 seconds. It was, it was at 16, 17 seconds, and I've been hunting him down, obviously, since 20 minutes ago. And I managed to catch him towards the end. However, it doesn't go exactly how I wanted it to. But you, you will see towards the end, but yeah, I'd obviously been trying to hunt down P7 uh, for a long time. So once I'd caught P7, I really wanted to overturn it. He did a monumental job trying to catch him uh, over a second or last, I think. He's doing 156s on there, he's the same as what I was doing. But yeah, we managed to catch him towards the end. And a couple of other spots as well, and you've got to think we were a P18 at the start of this one. And it's just been a solid drive since. I think without the contacts and getting spun out at the start of the race, it would have been would have been amazing to see what we could have done. Because I think we could have stuck with the front guys, but could have, would have, should have. Here we are on the back of Uzi Style and Mantelis now. Mantelis is for position. So that is P7. I think Uzi just pulled over. Thank you, Uzi Style, for pulling over there as well. The girls must have come up front. Bit of another Kettle Brown moment. 
Let's see if we can get onto the back of Mantlers, who were struggling. I'm not sure he took tyres either. But we're all over the ass end of him now. I think we're about to make a move very shortly. Oh, we're going to have a little play around anyway in a little bit of a race. Just coming into this again. So you can see how much worse the, the weather's got. It's due to be like this, like the, the entire race. A lot of the lads have reported flooding throughout the week when practicing, so... It's always going to be a difficult one. Porsche coming out of the way there. Shrimper, thank you, buddy. Mantle is just struggling for grip around there. Full on sliding he was, actually, now I'm seeing it. It's a bit of a dodgy one, this, because the green astro turf to the left and right is pure death, so... You know, there's not many too many lines you can take on this turn to make up as a position. He tried to go on his inside there, but he knew that was going to be Mantle, so with the grip that I have at the minute, as soon as I realised I've cleared him, I tried to go on the inside line, so... Try and defend the position. So right now we're in P6, and um, if you would have told me that at the start of the race that I would finish P6, I would have taken that considering what happened and the slug it took just to get back up there. But there's P5, you know, and we're on now the last lap, I believe. Now, oh, oh boys, honest to God. And the thing is, the last bit of the video is cut off because it's over an hour for some strange reason. So you get to see my calamity with him. And then the, the outcome of that. Anyway, so we're hunting down P5 right now, and for all intents and purposes, I should have probably had P5 at the end of this race, which would have been a fantastic result, again, given what happened. And then, the more I thought about it last night, the more I thought I should have just concreted, I should have just took P6, given everything that happened. The lab defended really well, there was nothing really I could have done. But I should have just took P6, I should have been the professional there, took the points, been happy with that. But I've watched the lap delta for about for 20 minutes come down to what it is now. So to try and not make a move, ah, Ayrton Senna would be rolling in his grave. So here we are, we're on the outside, we try the cut back. And he's way tight and it's sort of like a pit manoeuvre in there. And I'm really sorry, I've, I, I did apologise to the guy and I did wait for him at the line. I missed Manjulis the position there, but I did wait. Thank you guys for supporting me. Hit like and subscribe. Peace out.